everybody, I'm Bear. I'm a dev advocate on the Fabric team. And we're really excited to talk to you tonight, primarily about how we built Fabric. But we also know that a lot of you might not actually know what Fabric is, why Twitter built it, and any other questions you might have. So that's what we wanted to start the evening with tonight, letting you know what Fabric is, how it works, how you can use it, and then we'll get really into the nitty gritty of how we built it and the lessons we learned along the way. So this is what Twitter looked like on Android in 2009. This is when we were just getting started building native apps for Android. And like any new app developer, we had a bunch of crashes on, on Twitter for Android. And it was something that we were actively working to address. We had an in-house solution that we were using to monitor crashes on both iOS and Android. But there were some things that weren't totally getting caught. So we decided to investigate third-party uh, solutions for crash reporting. And one, one tool that we found that we really, really liked was a company called Crashlytics. And we loved their solution so much, and it surfaced so many bugs for us that our own solution was not catching, that we decided to actually bring them in-house and acquire them. So we had Crashlytics on board, and a few years later, in 2012, I think, we acquired a company called Mopub. And Mopub is an ad exchange for <coughs> mobile, developer, mobile developers. So if, for example, you want to get the best price for ad space in your app across a bunch of different ad networks, you can use Mopub's single SDK to aggregate all of the ad inventory across those networks and get the best price. And we thought that that was a really cool tool as well. So now that we had Crashlytics in-house and we also had Mopub in-house, we thought more about building our own native SDK for iOS and for Android. That was sort of the missing link for us. And that's what we built over the past year or so and what we released in October under the brand Fabric. So what Fabric is, essentially, is the unity of all of those platform offerings, the Crashlytics, Twitter, and Mopub, in groups that we call kits. And kits are all modular. If you want to use one piece of fabric, you can. One, one thread of fabric, one kit of fabric, you can. If you want to use all of them, you're more than welcome to. But we know that people will want to be able to pick and choose. So what we did was make the tool really simple to use to add any of these or just parts of them inside your app. So what I'm going to do really quickly is give you an overview of what each <coughs> kit provides before Israel and Ty walk into how we built it. So inside the Crashlytics kit, we obviously have crash reporting. And what that gives you is a really easy to read view of what's going on in your app and the particular lines that were crashing in inside your app. It's really easy to, to keep track of what's going on when you have Logcat attached to like a phone in your debugger and you can watch all the crashes that they're happening. But if you're having people test and they're on the bus, you don't necessarily know what happened. So what Crashlytics gives you is the actual file name that crashed, the line it crashed on, um, some extra information about the crash, like the version number uh, of your app that had it in where it crashed, and the number of crashes it's caused and the number of people it's affected. Now, we roll up all of that information into a indicator over here that we call impact level. So if, for example, there is one crash that is disproportionately accounting for crashes inside your app, it'll have a higher impact level than something that's happening as a one-off with people maybe on older devices who uh, are only making up a small portion of your user base. And we give you a pretty neat graph so you can check how many things are happening inside your app that are crashes versus non-fatal exceptions. This graph is really defined in your dashboard. We also break out the number of crashes that are happening by device and by operating system. So if any of you are wondering when you can finally drop support for Gingerbread, this will help you figure out how many crashes are coming in and how many of your users are actually on any of those operating systems. So this is all wrapped up in a neat and easy to use web dashboard at fabric.io. And when you, when you view these crashes, you are one among many, many people. We are actually processing 5.5 billion crashes per month. And that's a crazy number of crashes. So it's even possible that some of them have come from people in this room, whether you were the one who wrote, <laughs> wrote the thing that crashed or you're just using it on your phone. 5.5 billion crashes in 30 days. We also provide easy, easy to use beta distribution. Now, if any of you have ever tried to just email an APK to someone, say, just install it on your phone, that doesn't work all the time. I've had to walk a lot of people through the process of trying out my latest beta. So much easier, we give you an option to just share a link with somebody or input their email address and they get an email right away. And it's branded automatically based on your app icon. So if, for example, we're talking about our our sample app called Cannonball, it's got this, this beige and blue icon here. The theming on the email that comes in is all based off that icon. There will be a, a beige and blue glow. So you, it can look like something that's coming from your brand without you having to take any extra steps to make the email look 
look like it's you. So then once people test and they sign up, we also give you a dashboard to show you how far along in the process they are. Now this is also really useful because if Jason, for example, tells me, oh yeah, I've been using your app and I totally love it, I can say, Jason, you're a liar. You haven't even downloaded it, and I know that. <laughs> and I can track who's actually using it and get the best feedback from the people who are most active inside the app. The cool thing that we've also added is support for groups. So if you have a consistent group of people who you always want to test your beta, um, you can add them by this, this dashboard here. And you can also create groups through a link. So if you don't necessarily know who's going to be testing your app yet, you just want to post it on a forum somewhere, see who bites, and then keep that group consistently testing your app if you have successive versions that you want to test, you can share a link with them and then add them to a group automatically. So that's a whole lot of overhead of cutting and pasting email addresses that is off your plate. And that's what share links are for. So you can just create this, this share link and we'll automatically aggregate all of the emails for you so you have a list. You can also send out release notes. And we also have integration with Ant, Maven, and Gradle for automatically sending out beta builds as part of your build process. If that's something you want to do. Now, I haven't shown you a lot of code for all of these things because there are a ton of features inside the SDK. And we just wanted to give you broad overview context of what is actually in the product. If any of you guys have questions afterward, I'm more than happy to talk to you about the nitty gritty of getting this working and up and running in your app. So that was the Crashlytics kit. We now also have a kit for Twitter, which includes, as you would expect, of course, Twitter login and embedding tweets inside your app. But the new cool thing that we announced in October was digits. Digits is easy phone number sign-in. So instead of authenticating with email and password, you can ask people to enter in their phone number, they'll receive a confirmation code, and then you will get an auth token back that will act as your verified user authentication. Uh, it, you will get a verified user back. And it's super easy to use. It's as easy as putting in a digits button, and it doesn't have to be this color purple. You can, you can style it however you want. This is just our example. Um, you can just set up the button inside, inside your activity, and then give it a callback. And the auth callback will return with a session and a string that's the phone number, the verified phone number. And otherwise, it will give you some message about why, why the authentication didn't happen. But if you have a successful auth response, then you get the person's email, you get the person's phone number and also their current session. Now, suppose you want to theme the pop-up that comes up and let people use your colors inside the, the screen where they get to enter their phone number. That's also really easy to do. When you're laying out the button uh, in, in code, you just have to also add digits button set off theme, and then you can lay out the theme inside XML. We give you the option to change up the primary color, secondary color, uh, the window background color, and the link color. Um, and these will let you theme it so it looks and feels just like your app. There's no, no jarring difference. <coughs> and the great thing about digits is that we are already live and connected in, with operators in 216 countries. So that's almost every country in the world. And we're localized in 28 languages. So you can add digits today and have all of that infrastructure right at your fingertips. And the best part is it's totally free. We're, we're giving this away. It's something that we built for Twitter when we were trying to uh, reach users in countries where we know that a lot of people don't have email addresses. And phone number verification was extremely important for us. So just like Crashlytics, just like getting a great ad network out there, digits was something that Twitter found valuable for us and we wanted to share with you as well. So that's digits. Um, another portion of, of the Crashlytics kit, which is interesting to talk about, sort of related to digits, is Answers. Um, Answers is a lightweight uh, mobile analytics SDK. And it gives you information about what your, what your users are doing inside your app, where they're spending time, total session length, the number of new, mo new monthly actives you have, daily actives. And we've processed 2 trillion app events in the past 30 days. And this number is old. This is actually from October. So it's upwards of 2 trillion every 30 days. We're processing a lot of events, and we would love to give you some information about what's going on inside your apps. And the great thing is you also get this, this web dashboard that lets you view at any given time what's going on inside your app. Um, there's a live counter for how, much, how many people are inside your app right now. You can see average se session length, and that gives you a great understanding of what's going on with your users. And then probably the, the most, the most interesting thing to look at, too, is the crash-free users percentage. Um, if you're also using Crashlytics inside your app, 
we can tell you how many of your users are having a totally crash-free experience. And if that number starts to drop, we'll send you an email to let you know, hey, something's going on inside your app. It might be related to your app code. It might be an ops issue that's causing things to tank. But one way or another, you'll get that alert from us. And so here you can see we're detecting it. It's 0.1% uh, it's below expected. And that's around the time that our system starts to say, hey, what's going on? And we'll send you an email. You also get information about uh, what top issues people are facing on a daily basis. So if you've pushed uh, new releases, new versions, and you want to know uh, what, what is still crashing people's experience in your app most of the time, you can, you can check that out in here. And also see which of your versions is most active. So we also know that you're not going to be checking uh, your dashboard every day necessarily. So we send you a, an email with a summary of all the information that's happening in here. And we, this is not a joke, we actually put in TLDR to let you know what's happening. So it'll give you a top level summary. Users love it, daily active users are up. Or they might say, something might be wrong, crash for users has dropped by X percent. Um, we want you to be able to get the most important information about your app without having to search for it, without having to implement anything to, to understand what's really going on with your user experience. So that's the Crashlytics kit and the Twitter kit all in one. The last thing is Mopub. Mopub was the last piece of the puzzle for us. And like I said, what Mopub does is it takes the, this total of ads from direct advertisers, ad networks, and the Mopub marketplace. Um, how, many of you, how many of you find these to be familiar terms? OK, not some, but not all that many. So a direct advertiser would be someone who has explicitly bought ad space inside your app. One thing I heard is that um, Jam Juice bought space inside Fruit Ninja, for example, because they wanted people who are interacting with fruit and slicing it to think, oh, maybe I want a smoothie. So what Mopub does is it lets you put that direct sold ad inventory together with other other ads that are just generally available through the networks, and then get the ones that are giving you the best price to get space inside your app. And it's super <coughs> configurable. It's really easy to change up what sorts of ads are being put in there. So if Jamba Juice entered into a deal with them where they said they, um, they wanted all the space at a given time, it's very easy to set that up inside Mopub. And Mopub 2 is operating at a massive scale. We have 170 billion ad requests processed in the past 30 days. So lots and lots of ads being served. And um, we, pop, we power a lot of popular apps like Flow Free, if any of you guys have played this one. Um, we put the banner ads inside their app. And we also offer uh, full screen interstitials with video as well if you want. And the coolest thing probably is native, native ads. So native ads are built to look and feel like your app. And basically what happens is you get the individual ad assets that you can lay out to look like part of your list view. And as part of the Mopub SDK, we give you a wrapper that essentially wraps your data source and inserts the ads for you. So you didn't, don't need to worry about fetching, caching, placing the ads inside that list view. You just have to worry about your original data source, and Mopub does the rest. So in a blur, that is an overview of all the things that are available inside Fabric. And I would love to talk to any of you more about what's in there and how it can help you out as you build your apps. Um, you can sign up at fabric.io slash sign up. And if any of you guys are building an app that you're turning into a business, we are also running a contest right now called Hatch for any startup that is using Fabric inside their apps. So if you're interested and you want to be building, if, you, if you're building with Fabric and you want to be considered for prizes that include time with some of our, of our execs and time with some of Twitter's own investors in addition to a solid amount of funding, um, visit hatch.io and include your app inside the, the application. In the meantime, some useful links. Our docs are up at dev.twitter.com slash fabric. We've also got a, a sample app that shows you end-to-end -end the features of Fabric. It's called Cannonball, and it's up on GitHub under Twitter dev. And you can also download it now in Google Play under tico slash cbandroid. Cannonball is actually kind of hard to find. It's a common name. So we've created that short link for you. That has been Fabric in a Nutshell. <laughs> <laughs>